one time at Bad Boy, did you have any kind of percentage or any kind of revenue that was owed to you I can when be you honest, were left? I can be honest and tell you on this platform, the economic growth at Bad Boy. So let's talk about me coming from ABC and Orion. So I'm pretty much settled and I have a little bit of money and I'm, you know, I'm okay. And then I have a golden parachute and I have my apartment on fifth. So I'm good. I'm cool. Then I'm doing some promotional events, you know, with some music industry people and I'm being interviewed for maybe a job at Uptown to happen after this job is over at Orion. That's how the bad boy thing comes in. Andre through Jimmy Jenkins, the greatest promo man and one of the flyest of the executives that's still around right now, working with the Hughes brothers in film. Mm -hmm. So fly, I can't get him on the phone. But during this time, he was the fly promo guy, best friend to Andre Harrell, blowing Uptown up. And he introduced me to Andre to fulfill a marketing position. This is how close Andre and Sean were. Andre knew he was giving Sean the deal for Bad Boy, and Sean knew he needed someone to help him to put it together. Andre, in interviewing me and a few other people, it came down to me and another gentleman by the name of Brett Wright. God bless you, Brett Wright. We work right side by side. Brett is doing excellent business now, had all the hair magazines, a bee farm right now. Mm -hmm. All these people are winning. I didn't get the job at Uptown. Andre placed me or asked Sean, you know, hey, they did some type of conversation where Sean was like, I think I want you to come and be with me at Bad Boy. You should do this. And between Andre and him, that's where the opportunity became. And I took that opportunity because it was even better than working at Uptown, starting something fresh from day zero. The only thing we had achieved at that point was maybe naming the company Bad Boy, maybe we had an LLC, and the lawyer from Spivak and Masalis, Kenny Masalis, was the person that put the LLC together for us. I sat across from him. He was at his uptown desk. He had just been appointed VP of A&R and Artisan Development, maybe a few months into that. CCNY happened, shut us down. He came back to the job, and then we started to accelerate with Bad Boy through Uptown. Personality clash, we were thrown out of Uptown, and we were starting at Arista, where you came in. So yes, all those evolutions, I didn't have anything on paper, except for from the very beginning, he gave me 25% of the company. Right. And so I had 25% all the way throughout when we started at Uptown, I had my own money. There was no budget. At some point, we he didn't pay me, so I still had to take care of myself, but still work at Bad Boy, mm -hmm. picking up the jackets from D-Ferg, doing all that. I had to do all the same work. It was me and him, so everything he needed at that time, I took care of to build his company. I want to pause for a second because there are a lot of executives that came from that company. They're VPs now, they're presidents. All of them came after me. No and doubt. If, and if they felt that they were worked and that they put blood, sweat, and tears into Bad Boy, what do they think I did to get it ready for them? Mark Pitts, Harv Pierre, uh, Michelle Joyce came from there, Gwen Niles. Leote. Uh, Leote Blackmore went on to do Black Ground with Chaz and all of them. And she went to Rough Riders. Rough Riders with Darren and Joaquin, the Dean family. I had a part in helping them when we signed the locks and they were able to get their deal. Mm. Uh, everyone that we were affiliated with, I gave love to from what I knew here that the ancestors prepared me for, that I went and did a good job, never stealing, never lying, showing up, always responsible, never a day off, no vacation time ever, mm -hmm. just constantly grinding all the way through. 
And, it's, and, 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 I, and I had 25 percent. Wait a minute. So to yeah. answer the question, yeah. I had 25 percent at Uptown, no money initially. Then Andre might have paid me through the bad boy budget that there was a budget initially and I didn't get any of that. Then the second go around, I might have gotten something mm. and that might have been about 30,000 a year or something like that. It went to about 40,000 when I went to Arista in Old Boy's Defense. We had maybe a $5 million deal on the table from Arista. Let's say that's the number. Three million was for budgets, marketing for three artists. Then the two or so was for what he needed to do to get things together. He might have offered me half of that for what I needed to do, but I knew based on the deal, I couldn't have that in my pocket. We had to have an office space, pay rent, executives, and all. So that's how I budgeted myself at having a smaller amount so we can make the company work at the time you was calling and I had to make sure everyone was paid from security and this and that and that and this. That's what happened. So 25% was what I was really counting on. Mm -hmm. And then it came to be a point where he took that back, him and Kenny Masalas. They, it was all of a sudden, it was boom, boom, boom. We need it right now. You have to sign this right here. And this is what needs to happen. It's desperate, it's urgent. I thought they I, I thought they was playing like I was told that uh It was a ruse. It was a ruse. Because <laughs> I was know, told that <laughs> it was a couple of baseball bats that was <laughs> Well, you know <laughs> you know how you set the scene. That was there was it was a couple of baseball bats that helped change your mind. <laughs> no, let me tell you. No, I don't mean to laugh at it. No, it's no, no. it's, it's all funny laughable. now. No, it's because cause I was because I was because I was told yo, you know, there had to be some extra pressure and influence. Well, here's yeah, there was some pressure on this guy. That wasn't, that wasn't what made me change my mind. Huh. You understand? Because where I come from, I might not be street, but I can withstand an ass whipping for my money. What happened was the fact that he even pulled it. Right. I was crushed. <laughs> Yo, on the inside. But see, you the know, thing about it is, that, Kurt, put, it was always, it, you know, this 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 was my I looked at it this way because y'all was so close and I not, and I heard you say this before you say yo y'all used to pray together y'all to, we did we prayed together to make that company happen we prayed when 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 Universal MCA fired him based on the CCNY we had no actual money or chance or opportunity at that time mm -hmm. he was locked in a hotel and i'll get into it in the book with his mom and people like sister soldier visiting this was around the time that he recognized me as a true person because during that time at the lowest when no one wanted to be bothered with him and that's not true because no none of the none of the uh record companies none in the, the business company like that because well, he was sad and distressed about it. So whoever it was that wanted to be bothered with him, he Cause, didn't Because he used to come out, he still used to come out with the same game. And D. Ferg used to say, yo, that, yo, that nigga, yo, that nigga was talking about killing himself, man. Um, and I and I said, so know. let him. <laughs> okay. Well, see, well, if that's that, what he want to do. <laughs> some of that I want to say for yeah. the books. It's a natural reaction. They start mixing the facts in. They put their story with your story. Like, that's really what happened. When